Okay, Algebra 2, let's pick up our notes from 13.7 right where we left them off here. So we did two examples already. The first one that we did had, let me take a look, an A value and a K value, but not an H. Second example we did had an A and an H, but not a K. Third example I want to do with you guys is this one right here, where I was going to say we didn't really have an A value, but there is a negative out in front of that cosine right there. And what that means for us is that A is equal to negative 1. Now that's not going to change our amplitude at all, but the fact that A is negative means that we are going to do a flip for this graph right over here. Okay, what's going on then next? H is the number being subtracted from X inside the parentheses. Here, I see an X plus pi over 3, and that means that H is actually negative pi over 3. Sorry, that's an ugly 3. And a negative h value means that this graph is being shifted to the left. Then we've got a plus 2 at the end of all that, so that's going to be your k value. And a k value of 2 means that we're going up. So with all this in mind, let's go ahead and let's keep doing what we were doing a second ago, trying to come up with our midline and our max and our min. So our midline is always just the k value, which in this case is going to be 2. The I'll do all this on one line, I think. The maximum is that k value right there of 2, and we would add the absolute value of a, your amplitude that, to that. So 2 plus 1 is going to get us a maximum y value of 3. And the minimum then starts with that same midline k value of 2, but now we subtract the amplitude. 2 minus 1 is going to get us 1 for our minimum y value. So everything's pretty tight here within the range of this function. Everything goes between 1 and 3 with a midline of 2. All right, guys, let's go ahead and make ourselves a table right now. We're going to do an x and a y column just like always, but as I'm hoping we learn, from this example here at the end of the previous video, it sometimes is difficult to come up with good x values in the column of the left. But if you do that right, that means you're going to get nice clean y values over there on the right, which should make it easy to graph. And what I'm hoping we learned from that last example is that starting our table with h, which in this case was pi over 4, made this work out pretty well. We're going to do that same thing right here, guys. Our first x value is going to be our h value, which in this case right here is negative pi over 3. Um, it's up to you if you guys want to go ahead and use the pi over 3 right now. In fact, let me do that, and then I'll come back and fill in the rest of the table here pretty soon. But my hope was that putting this value of negative pi over 3 into this equation would give us a relatively nice answer here, and we'd be able to get off to a good start. So here we go. Putting in pi o negative pi over 3 right here for x, negative pi over 3 plus pi over 3 turns this angle into 0, which is just what we wanted. The cosine of 0, we're right here, guys, on the unit circle. Cosine is your x-coordinate, which is 1. But then we have to remember to take the opposite of that. So we end up at negative 1 right here, and then add 2 at the end of that. Negative 1 plus 2 is going to get us 1 for our first y value. Okay, not too bad. Now, let me stick to something I said on the previous example. What we're going to do every time we do these problems is we're going to take this h value, and then each time here we are going to add pi over 2 to that in order to get our next value. This one gets a little bit ugly, but let's run through it. Negative pi over 3, and we're going to add pi over 2 to that. All right, guys, we need a common denominator, and that's going to be 6. Doubling the first fraction, top and bottom, that is a negative 2 pi over 6. And in the second fraction, we'll multiply the top and the bottom by 3. That's going to be 3 pi over 6, and that is going to get us 1 pi over 6. And that will be the next angle that we want to put within this uh, table right here, pi over 6. Let me just move this green arrow down because I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. Okay, um, actually I lied. Let's go ahead and let's keep going with those values right there. My next x value comes from pi over 6 uh, and then plus that pi over 2. But let me remind you guys, pi over 2 magically turned into 3 pi over 6. That We already have the common denominator now, so this will do the job. That'll get us 4 pi 
over 6, which we would simplify now to 2 pi over 3. And that, there we go, is going to be our next x value, 2 pi over 3. Got it. All right, we're going to do the same thing again now, guys. So one more time. Let's take 2 pi over 3, actually, which was, before I simplified it, 4 pi over 6. And we're adding then this 3 pi over 6 again to it. We're always adding pi over 2. Now we're going to get 7 pi over 6 for the next x value. Okay, 7 pi over 6. And I wanted to do one more. Let's add pi over 2 again to 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 plus, and again, I'm just bringing down, sorry, the 3 pi over 6 then. That is going to get us 10 pi over 6, dividing that both by 2, 5 pi over 3. So that is the last angle that we're going to put in there, guys, into that table. Okay, let me get rid of that pi over 2. And in fact, while I'm at it, I'm going to get rid of all of this work right here, as pretty as it was. All right, and now let's start filling in our table. Let's see what we got. So we are now right here putting in a pi over 6 into what we have up above. So let me clear some of this junk out. All right, oops. Already wrote over that. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, here we go, guys. Pi over 6 right here is going to get added to pi over 3. Now, that might get complicated, so maybe we should write this out. We don't have a common denominator. Pi over 6 plus pi over 3, well, common denominator is going to be 6. Pi over 6 plus a 2 pi over 6 is going to get us 3 pi over 6, which simplifies to pi over 2. And, as I was kind of expecting, that put us at one of the quadrantal angles right here. So when we put in pi over 6, pi over 6 plus pi over 3 gets us right here, guys, to pi over 2. Cosine at that angle is your x-coordinate, which is 0. The opposite of 0 is still 0, plus 2 gets us 2 for that y value there. Okay, fun, fun, fun. Let me get rid of all of this. I have a feeling I might need that space again. Let's move down to our third one now, 2 pi over 3. Now, this one shouldn't be that hard to see, I hope. 2 pi over 3 gets added to 1 pi over 3, which makes 3 pi over 3. The 3's cancel, and that just gets us to a nice clean angle of pi located right here. Cosine is your x-coordinate, which at this angle is negative 1, but then we take the opposite of that negative 1 to get positive 1. Positive 1 plus 2 gets us 3 now for that y value. Okay, moving right along here, guys. We move now to 7 pi over 6. So, back to the hard stuff. The 7 pi over 6, which is our x value, gets added to pi over 3. Now remember, pi over 3 is 2 pi over 6. That's going to get us 9 pi over 6. And dividing a 3 out from both of those, we're going to get a 3 pi over 2. Nope, 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 3 pi over 2, which moves our angle right down here straight south. Cosine at that angle, your x-coordinate is 0, the opposite of which is 0, plus 2 gets you 2 here again. And the last one here, guys, before we can start graphing, 5 pi over 3. So, 5 pi over 3, we're putting it in right here. We're going to add a pi over 3 to that. Already have a common denominator, so this is now 6 pi over 3, which becomes... 2 pi. So again, we just keep getting the quadrantal angles over and over and over again. Cosine at 2 pi, which is the same as cosine of 0, is 1. The opposite of that is negative 1 plus 2 gets us right back to 1. All right, so with all of that work done, everybody, let's go ahead and start working on our graph here. Now again, just like in the example we did two problems ago, all of my y values are positive here, which means I don't really need anything below the x-axis in this graph, although I might uh, yeah, we did put a negative angle in there for x. So, all right, let's see where we're at. 
I think most of us would probably prefer just to label the x-axis the same as we always do, which is ending it here at 2 pi. And if we were to do that like normal, this would be 1 pi, and this would be pi over 2, and this guy here would be 3 pi over 2. Those are the, 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 the demarcations on the x-axis that we know and love. But if you look at the x values that we came up with here, guys, those are not the ones that we're dealing with. We want to take all all of those values and we want to move them pi over 3 to the left. So let's take a look at where we're at here, guys. Um, I'd actually start probably by thinking about this one right over here. And pi over 6 is going to be, let's see here, guys, this spot, I wouldn't mark this down, is pi over 4. So pi over 6 would be just a little bit to the left, oops, sorry, a little bit to the left of that, not sure why that's doing that. And I would say, okay, good enough, I give up. I would say that where I have that right now, about a third of the way between 0 and pi over 2, that would be pi over 6. All right? All right. And now I'm going to kind of keep doing that same thing over and over again. A third of the way between pi over 2 and pi, that is going to be 2 pi over 3. A third of the way between pi and 3 pi over 2 is going to be 7 pi over 6. And then right here, a third of the way between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, that is going to be 5 pi over 3. And the one I missed would probably have been right about here, guys, and that one would be negative pi over 3. All right, let me go back to the lines that I've been drawing lately right here, which have been horizontal. Our maximum, oh, I didn't label my y-axis. Hold that thought, everybody. Okay, if I wanted to do this right, let's see. This distance from here to pi is roughly three units, okay? And that means that if I went about the same distance up right about here, that would be three units also. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys, but relatively close. And now I'm just guessing that one would be about here, and two would be about here, and those are really the only things that I need. Let me get rid of this guy right here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and draw those horizontal lines, one of them right here at one, gotcha, one of them roughly right here at two, and the third one right about here at three. Again, you don't have to draw those horizontal lines, I just find it kind of helpful to get me to locate my points. Okay, guys, first ordered pair, negative pi over three, positive one. So we're beginning right here. Now notice, guys, we're beginning at a low point, at a minimum. A cosine wave normally begins at a peak. We start high and then come down and then back up. But because of the negative in front of this, this entire graph now is being flipped top to bottom. And that means we're actually going to start at a trough. So in a weird way, that makes some sense. Second order pair, pi over 6 and then positive 2 right there. We've got 2 pi over 3, positive 3, got it. 7 pi over 6, that gets us a y value of 2 at the midline again. And 5 pi over 3, 1. All right, guys, this arrangement of five dots is not as symmetrical as I would have liked it to be. But yeah, this looks about right for what a cosine wave should do. So I'm just guessing here, guys, as to what I think this thing is going to look like. I'm trying to draw some curvature to it. Eh, that's a relatively gentle one. And it's going to look something like that. So that's our graph of this function. y equals the opposite of the cosine of x plus pi over 3 and plus 2. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I'm not really showing you guys how to do the problem this way, but I want to remind everybody that normally, cos well, not normally, always, cosine of 0 is 1. So what that means is that a normal cosine wave usually starts right up here at the point 0, 1, and it comes down and back up and down and back up, and there you go. But I just want to remind you guys that most cosine waves begin at the ordered pair 0, 1. This cosine wave that we just graphed, the first point we came up with was right here. The ordered pair was negative pi over 3, 
comma, and our y value there was 2. Well, in a weird way, everything that happened up here explains how that point moves from 0, 1 right here to pi over 3, negative 2. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at exactly how this might flip around here, guys. And it's kind of, eh, it kind of has something to do with order of operations right there. Like, for example, that point, 0, 1, is going to get moved pi over 3 units to the left, which is going to bring it over here. Okay, then the negative is going to flip it down over the x axis like this, but the plus two is going to bring it back up a couple of units there uh, as well, actually back to where we were just a second ago. So it moved left, it moved down two units because of the reflection, but then up two units again because of the plus two, and that gets you to this point right over here. So, kind of a weird way of looking at things. Probably better off just going with the table here. All right, all right. Last problem I want to do with you guys. In this one, we're pulling out all the stops. We have an A value right here, which is going to be 4. We have an H value. The number subtracted from X, well, since that's a positive, our H value is actually a negative 3 pi over 4. And we have a K value right here of negative 3. So there's no flip here. But this graph is moving to the left, and it is moving down from where it normally would be located. All right, if this is helpful, let's write all this out, guys. The midline is always just your k value, which in this case is negative 3. The maximum is going to be that value right there plus your amplitude, the absolute value of a. Negative 3 plus 4 is going to be 1. And the minimum is going to be this k value minus your amplitude. So negative 3 minus 4 is going to get us negative 7. Okay, let's start making our table here of x and y values. All right, and again, we probably just don't want to start with x here. That's probably going to be messy. It's usually a good idea to start with whatever h is, which in this example is negative. 3 pi over 4. Let's plug it in and see what we got. Negative 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 makes this angle 0. The sine of 0 is 0, times 4, still 0, minus 3 gets us negative 3. So there's our starting point. Now from here, guys, just like we've been doing all along, we are going to take this value right here and add pi over 2 to that. So negative 3 pi over 4 plus, and guys, let me be smart here. Rather than writing pi over 2, let me go ahead and get that common denominator of 4 by doubling both the top and the bottom right here. That's going to be a 2 pi all over 4, and that gets us to negative pi over 4 for the second angle that we're going to be using negative pi over 4. Okay, and if we did, uh, let me get rid of that guy. If we did the same thing here again, you're going to see a similar trend here. Negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4 is going to be 1 pi over 4. That would be our third angle here of pi over 4. And at this point, I'm hoping you guys see a pattern. The denominators are always going to be 4, and the numerators increase by 2 each time. Negative 3, negative 1, positive 1. So if I keep adding 2 on top, I'm going to get positive 3 pi over 4, and then 5 pi over 4 for the last angle that we're going to use. Okay, let me get rid of all of this, and let's try, try to keep filling out this table here, guys, and let's see what happens. All right, negative pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4. Write it out if you need to. Negative pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 is going to get us 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Look at your unit circle if you need to, but I'm hoping you guys are going to start to get to this point here where you can kind of visualize this without drawing it out. Pi over 2 is straight up on the unit circle at the point 0, 1, and sine is your y coordinate there, which is 1. Times 4 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. Moving right along. Now let's do pi over 4. So positive pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 is going to get us 4 pi over 4. 4s cancel, and we just get pi. 
So let's keep moving along. Sine at pi, we're straight to the left, straight west on the unit circle. Sine, your y coordinate there, is zero. Times four, still zero, and zero minus three, negative three. Okay, gotcha. Um, looking at three pi over four, our fourth angle right here. So three pi over four, oh, plus another three pi over four is gonna get us six pi over four. Divide out a two there, and we're gonna get three pi over two. So now we're straight down on the unit circle where sine or your y value is negative one. Four times negative one is negative four, minus three is negative seven. And as I'm hoping you guys have realized, when we put in this last value right here, which in this case is 5 pi over 4, we always get the same y value that we got when we started. That's going to give us negative 3. That actually would have become, let's see, 5 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 would have been 8 pi over 4, which becomes 2 pi, where sine is 0 times 4 minus 3 is going to get you negative 3. Okay, guys, so... Some grunt work right there. It, it, it certainly wasn't easy, but we've come up with the table of values right here. And this graph might need to be a little bit more evenly distributed here, guys. Let me take a look here. My max is one. My minimum is negative seven. So I actually need a lot of area below the x-axis right here. But the other thing to notice here, everybody, is that it really doesn't go that far right. Our biggest x value right here is five pi over four. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to right about here, not as far out as I can, and I'm gonna call that pi, okay? Now, halfway between zero and pi is going to be pi over two. Um, you know what, if I was smart, which I'm clearly not, um, I probably would have written those up on the top and not on the bottom. You'll see why in a minute. So this was pi. Um, you know what, it doesn't really matter where I put them. Oh well, this was pi over two. Uh, right about there would be pi over four. And right here, guys, halfway between one half pi and one pi would be three pi over four. And if I just kind of follow the same pattern, one pi over four, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. This guy right here would be 5 pi over 4. Gotcha. And now I could keep going to the left, everybody, just trying to be even with my spacing. Here would be negative pi over 4. Right here would be negative 2 pi over 4, which becomes a negative pi over 2. Oh, and I tried, and I still didn't make this graph long enough to the left right over here. One more spot right there would be a negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, gotcha. And on my y-axis, it looks like I need to go down 7 units right here in order to pull this off. I don't think I've left myself enough room to do this accurately because by my scale, guys, from here to here is roughly three units. So to go seven, oh man, it would have to be way down here, more than twice as long as that distance right there. I don't think I've got the room for it. And also it's not hugely important. So listen, I'm gonna go pretty far down right here and say, okay, that's negative seven. Now I'm just gonna kind of guess. All right, if that's seven, I'm gonna say that this right here is maybe about negative one. This here would be positive one. I want this midline value of negative three there as well, which should be halfway between one and negative seven. So just kind of eyeballing, but right about here, I would say is gonna be negative three. Okay, let me keep drawing these horizontal lines right here. I find them helpful. I don't know if you guys do or not, but there's our maximum value at one, our midline value right here at negative three, and our minimum value way down here at the bottom of seven. I think my spacing was so-so, but not great there. Nothing to write home about. Anyway, doesn't really matter as long as we have things labeled properly. Let's draw our graph now, guys. Negative 3 pi over 4, negative 3. So negative 3 pi over 4, negative 3 gives us a starting point right there. Next ordered pair, negative pi over 4, positive 1. That looks like it's going to be our first peak. Third point is pi over 4 and then negative 3. We're back here to an intercept of the midline. 
Next ordered pair, 3 pi over 4, and then all the way down to negative 7. Got it. And our fifth and final point, 5 pi over 4, and we're back to that midline value of negative 3. So those five points, guys, do look like the arrangement of a sine wave here. So I'm going to kind of draw this guy looking like that. I know the curve would move that way. And then I just kind of go from dot to dot right here. Okay, changing the curvature at that point. It's now bent upward. And then we'll hit this point and go there. And if I were to continue, it would now start to bend down just a little bit. But that's probably good enough. And guys, there's our graph here for y is equal to 4 sine of x plus 3 pi over 4, all minus 3. Listen, guys, 13.7 is a tough section, no doubt about it. But hopefully those examples, you can find one that correlate to the homework problems you guys need to do. And hopefully you've got a sense for how it is we're going to work our way through those very slowly, very methodically. But the big important thing I want you to take away is that anytime there is an H involved. You've got to be really smart and really careful about the x values that you choose. But if you do that well, the y values that you you end up with should all work out nicely. And they should equal the values of your midline, your maximum, and your minimum, and nothing else besides those values right there. So take your time working through those problems, guys. Check your work frequently to make sure that you're doing it right. All right, everybody, that's all of 13.7. Good luck on that one.